most crucial viva table that was the question i was asking the senior okay that decides again day one plus trauma viva table okay because this is our daily activity we are doing this trauma daily in and out okay hence the margin of error is zero and 90% of the entire results if it is always correlate with the trauma marks if you just ask anyone how much you know kind of you get in trauma the most of the guys who fail in trauma fail in the exams okay most of the guys hence you would be very very careful in trauma the problem with trauma station is because the marks are only two marks questions lakh screw they can easily spoil your exam lax crew it, we know it's very easy simple we are doing in and out but simple things lax crew is a very difficult topic to pass in the exam okay. you can't miss any single step take it from me lax crew i can easily pull any of them when doing the practice mm -hmm. and dc plating principles of plating absolute stability relative stability how you are going to do it neck of femur please pray to god don't get lax screw neck of femur open fracture compartment syndrome these are the questions which can easily spoil the mood of your exam because there is only two marks my examiner is repeatedly saying lax screw either you get four or you get seven that's it there is no five or six for lax screw either you can do trauma or you can't do trauma i can't insist more than this lax screw plating you need to mention it very very clearly each and every step and especially neck of femur young patient that is most important trapping question for any any candidate an open fracture you should smooth flow in the open fracture and compartment syndrome as well right how to approach trauma i have just taken this do not underestimate the problem with trauma questions is because we know them that's the problem because as soon as we see some x ray neck of femur we jump into it we jump into it and answer them in a fast pace and just get trapped okay for example i got a question in this exam they show us spine x ray which is inadequate x ray okay they asked me to comment about the spine right i can see that there's a facet joint dislocation very obviously okay but it is but it is exactly 50% it is exactly 50% okay they wanted me to comment about that x ray that it is inadequate that's one point second canadian c spine rule second third thing what do you think about this facet joint dislocation i told it's very difficult to comment it's 50% okay what are you going to do then go for ct or mri they asked me to point out what you find in the facet joint it was literally asked me to point out where is the facet and where is the facet dislocation and what is the sign if you don't mention where is the facet you fail whatever you wanted to say spinal shock neurogenic shock they won't take you further so that's what x rays spend time to describe the x rays fully wait for the questions what the examiner is going to ask you smell the money where it's going to be and do not waste time on history or clinical examination you mention the x rays all the findings because most of the x rays what they show in trauma is bit tricky x rays especially for pelvic open fracture they will show the x ray with the pelvic binder in the wrong place if anyone point out that in the first shot that this pelvic binder in the wrong place i make sure that it put in the right place they will go they get seven straight away okay these questions these things minute things but you need to make sure you spot them spot down the first x rays and then you go the history clinic nowadays the examiner are get bored very well with this history clinical examinations you make one sentence assuming atls is done clinical history clinical examination to make sure it's open fracture or any neurovascular problem that's it one second just finish up this whole story and they will say everything is done is isolated and then you focus on the management management is the key for trauma whatever you wanted to mention history clinical examination that means you're wasting time you're not scoring marks you have to explain the x-ray for one minute and then go for management management is the key here again management it could be non operative don't hesitate to say non operative mention this is what i'm going to do this is what whatever you do do that daily normal practice mention them but mention them with support with the literature 
particularly if acg3 dislocation gate 3 dislocation i'm not going to operate unless the patient is very high demanding job overhead activities then you can argue with that with the literature again if you stick on with one plan of treatment stay there don't change your mind because for me the question they ask me okay this is a for 55 years lady you are going to treat non operatively agree the patient is not happy is coming after 3 months that it is cosmetic it is looking very proud and she is not having pain what are you going to do still i will stay with my treatment the patient is not happy the patient is going to the pulse is going to put a complaint against you yes still i will stay the same treatment i am not going to operate for the cosmetic deformity if the patient doesn't have any pain i will leave it okay the patient is going to complain against you you going you not going to change your mind well as far as myself i am not going to operate any patient for cosmetic i will operate if there is a pain okay if the patient is not agree with me i will get a second opinion from the colleague and look at this x ray we not treat this x ray yes i am not going to treat the x ray i will see the patient i will take a decision after seeing the patient stick on to your guns whatever you daily do stick on to your guns if you change your plan that's it you fail again okay and both guidelines literature trauma is incomplete without any literature apart from these usual guidelines apart from these trials and trials has to be minute crystal clear detail number of patients where was the study done how was the study what are the bias you need to know full about these trials just mentioning proper trial will not help you for the exam i'm telling you again just keep a crystal clear data for each and every trial there's only seven points you have to remember number of patients when was the study done who was the lead and where was it done and what was the study and what was the bias and what was the critics about it that's all you need to know about each and every trial there are only these many trials for common exam scenarios please practice these trials take a short notes and practice next know your limitation for complex cases tell them clearly i haven't done myself and i will refer to the if it is a pelvic open fracture pelvic surgeon spine tell spine the surgeon make sure you don't operate new surgery on the viva table that is again fail if you wanted to commit something just by looking at the knowledge then you will be fail you have to say what you have done they wanted to know what are the clinical equipment what you are going to do especially for posterior dislocation what you are going to do anterior approach why anterior approach yes that's how i should do that's what you have to be able to reduce it okay what will you do the particular question for approach for the posterior dislocation use facuda this is a clinical nobody will reduce the posterior dislocation without facuda you mention ashun as the facuda that is that's it exam will be happy and they'll ask about literature and approach make sure you reach the approach along with literature on all the trauma viva topics that means you are in the comfort zone you are comfortable for the approach these are the four things they are marking on not everything position landmark internal plane structures at risk these are the four things they marks on rest of the thing they don't hear okay okay that's fine that's fine you go to the next question landmarks internal plane structures at risk keep this approaches for whenever you practicing the approaches keep this one clear right next basic signs basic sign should be under our sleeves we don't give up to the examiner the way to pass this basic signs is to know the definition for all 29 topics there are only 29 topics for this exam viva for basic signs i can list out what are the topics these are only 29 topics prepare definition for each and everything articular cartilage you can make it different because basic signs is a place where nobody mention about literature to be very specific especially basic signs to score better marks to score good marks after coming through two or three candidates the examiner get bored to so make the examiner wake throw the literature articular cartilage has six literature if you throw the six literature in the articular cartilage along with the diagram that's it you will get eight okay so teach the examiners make the examiners that somebody they are just gaining today slog it well basic signs no mercy you have to keep it under your sleeves make sure that you can bail out yourself if you know very well basic science you, any station anywhere if you, i divide into three spaces okay and it's going to be one acute scenario they have to ask about acute scenario this is the fsc curriculum 
So either it could be trauma or it could be infection. It could be human bite injury or it could be trauma related to any kind of uh, perilunate or lunate dislocations. They have to ask about elective, which is LAC, SNAC, CMC, OA, right? It could be anything. And they have to ask about anatomy guided slide pathology. So they will show some anatomy dissection. So it could be extensor compartment or it could be UCL and they will take it from there. And again, no pathology. So these are the curriculum they have mentioned very clearly in the FRCS. So they have to ask on these topics for hands. It is everywhere in the curriculum. If you go through that, these are the things they have to test you. Okay, next, pediatrics. Pediatrics is the only place where you're going to see a specialized guide. Okay, hence you have to be very clear with the principles. You can't play around with them. Right, again, it divided into three. I keep scenario. They have to ask you about Smith Peterson approach. All day one consultants should know about Smith Peterson approach because you have to wash out septic hip at some time. Anyone refer a septic hip to a pediatric surgeon will fail. Take it from me. I know personally a candidate who told I'm going to refer to the pediatric surgeon straight away fail. So this is a day one consultant at any places in a district hospital should do it. So any infections, acute situations, and trauma. Trauma always keep an eye on non-accidental injury. This is very, very important. Any trauma, first to tell them, I want to make sure it's non-accidental injury. Okay, then they will, okay, it's not non-accidental. Then you go to the proper topic. And the big P topic, DD, Hperti, CTV, Sufi. These four, if you get any time, you just have to nail it with some literature. That will be one of the questions. There is a bit of miscellaneous topics they've asked, but again, the miscellaneous topics is are only on principles. It's a leg length, leg, length deform, leg length discrepancy principles. It can come in tibia vera, Blount's disease, or tibial bowing, or related to scoliosis, or cerebral palsy. These things you need not talk about the principles. Very unlucky candidates, they make it neonatal problems. Neonatal problems are basically, uh, you are asking an exam in a one year or one uh, one day old child having problems it could be brachial plexus or it could be congenital knee dislocations very rarely on three three occasions they've asked these questions and that especially they've asked on the day two of the viva day one they're not asking this question i don't know why day two they're asking these two questions this neonatal trauma brachial plexus knee dislocation the key in the knee dislocation is you need to sort out the knee before going into the hip that's the key behind it the patient may have DDH, at the same time, the patient may have a congenital knee dislocations. Unless you sort out the knee dislocation, you can't put them in Pavlov's harness. That is the key behind it. Next, adult pathology, it is examiner's table. Okay, it is, it is their table, they can play with you like anything. It is a war between our theory knowledge and the examiner's experience. So hence, play it sensibly and humble Start with always non-operative and then go to focus. If you pass decently with the adult pathology, that's all you can do. If you do very well, that's well and good. I used to wonder, there are four tables, well, including pediatrics, it's like five tables. How to revise these topics? Whenever I do clinical examination, I do revise adult pathology. That is easy for us because one table is less. When you are practicing clinical examination, do adult pathology. Shoulder examination, talk about shoulder, OA. Rotataka Fathropathy, that you, you can finish the table like that. What do you need to know to pass this exam? You need to have 90% of orthopedic experience. I won't say knowledge as well. Orthopedic clinical experience, if you... Right. There are some controversies 